Every now and then, two shows come along that have shockingly similar characters. And for hit shows Mad Men and Suits, this is 100% the case. At first glance, you'll notice a lot of similarities between Suits' Harvey Specter and Mad Men's Don Draper. But there's a lot more these two share in common than appearance. Today, we'll discuss some of the obvious similarities, like their appearance, and get into some of the deeper ones, like their commitment issues. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm a one-man show here, and your subscription helps me to continue to create the content that you love. Now, on to the video. Here are 10 similarities between Harvey Specter and Don Draper. Number 1. Appearance We alluded to this, but we gotta officially point it out. From their dapper suits to their perfectly styled hair, these men strike quite the physical resemblance. Both men are tall, strong, and physically imposing. Traits that help them in both business and with the ladies. And as we'll come to find out, these men are no stranger to the boardroom and the bedroom. Number 2. Scotch on the Rocks In Mad Men, it's very rare to see the boys without a drink in their hand. Likewise, it's quite common to see Harvey toasting to an occasion. And though they don't have the exact same drink, they're very similar. For Harvey, it's a Macallan single malt scotch. And for Don Draper, who will literally drink anything, it's typically either a whiskey neat or a signature old fashioned. Number three, commitment issues. Both of these men are big time womanizing heartbreakers who struggle with commitment and seem to bounce from relationship to relationship. Harvey has several romantic interests. He briefly dated Zoe Lawford, he attempted several times to have a real relationship with his old fling Dana Scott, aka Scotty. Later, he dated his therapist, Dr. Paula Agard, but that eventually ended when she gave him an ultimatum to choose between their relationship and working with Donna. And thus, lastly, of course, there is Donna, the one Harvey ultimately ended up with. For Don Draper, my God, where do we start? Throughout the course of the show, Don Draper has around 20 love interests. Here are some notables. There's his first wife, Betty, who Don is cheating on with Midge. Next, there's Rachel Mankin, who's possibly the one who got away. There's Joy, the strange aristocrat, his client Jimmy Barrett's wife, Bobby Barrett, his daughter's teacher, Miss Farrell, his secretary, Allison, Dr. Faye Miller, and his second wife, Megan, who he was also cheating on with his neighbor, Sylvia Rosen. Whew. Yes, there's more, but I think you get the point. Don Draper, like Harvey, has some commitment issues. Number four, broken homes. A lot of the commitment issues these men have could stem from their upbringing. The childhoods of both of these complicated men were not so great. Harvey Specter lived in a home where his father, a musician, was constantly away. Because of this, his mother eventually cheated on his father, something which Harvey himself unfortunately had to witness. It wasn't long before Harvey was ready to escape and set his sights on Harvard and then New York City. Don Draper had an even sadder childhood. Don, whose real name is Dick Whitman, was the illegitimate child of a prostitute who died during childbirth. Don lived with his father Archie and his father's wife Abigail until he was 10. Eventually, his father, a drunk, would pass away too after being kicked in the face by a horse. Don went so far as to go to the war in Korea and subsequently change his entire identity to escape his family. Number 5. Employee Marriage Of all the love interests these two men had, they both opted to tie the knot with their respective secretaries. Although Harvey has what seems like will be a more meaningful relationship with Donna, Don opted to marry his young secretary, Megan, a marriage which ultimately and quickly failed. Number 6. The Outsider Mentee Both Don and Harvey are mentors to atypical and outsider mentees. Peggy Olson is an outsider simply because she's a woman, in a time when all ad executives were men. Mike Ross is an outsider because, well, he didn't really go to law school. Despite these abnormalities, thanks to their incredible mentors, both would go on to succeed. Number 7. Name Partners at the start of both series, both men are higher-up executives, but their names are not yet on the door. Harvey works at Pearson Hardman, and Don works at Sterling Cooper. It takes both parties a while before they eventually become name partners. For Don, 
he became a founding partner at the new firm Sterling Cooper Draper Price after he and his colleagues left their previous agency in lieu of an unwanted acquisition. It's in season three when Harvey Specter finally gets his name on the door. Though he was plotting Jessica's takedown at the time, it's Jessica who shows up with a business card that reads, Pearson Darby Specter, to get Harvey back on her side. And it wasn't long before the name on the door just read, Pearson Specter. Number eight, old secretaries. Both men couldn't seem to keep their hands off their young, beautiful secretaries. And you gotta learn from your mistakes. So when the secretary job was up for grabs, both men opted to hire much older women, women they themselves wouldn't be tempted to mess around with. For Don, it was Miss Ida Blankenship, the old and comically incompetent secretary. For Harvey, it was Gretchen Bedinsky, the old but extremely competent secretary. In the end, both men made the smart choice here. Number 9. Fancy Cars with their powerful and high-paying jobs, they need a powerful and expensive car to match. Though both men are seen sporting stylish cars, Harvey Specter definitely takes the cake in this category. As a member of the Gotham Car Club in New York, Harvey is a car enthusiast. Throughout the series, he's seen driving a variety of flashy cars, including a Lincoln Town Car, Mercedes S-Class, Lexus LS, Ferrari 365 GTS 4, Ford Mustang, Tesla Roadster Sport, and a Jaguar E-Type. While not a full-blown enthusiast like Harvey, the successful progression of Don Draper can be shown through his cars. In the series premiere, he has a 1959 Oldsmobile. Then came a 61 Dodge, which he wrecked while driving drunk, but it wasn't long before Don opted for a 1965 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. And during one of his visits to Los Angeles, Don was seen in a 1963 Ford Thunderbird. What's a guarantee is that both men love to ride in style. And finally, number 10, developmental panic attacks. Both men are under a lot of stress and pressure at work while also battling their own inner demons. The result for both men is panic attacks. Don's panic attack comes in season four, episode 10, when he mistakes two men in suits for government agents, thinking he's going to be apprehended. For Harvey, in season five, episode three, he loses Donna and begins suffering panic attacks of his own, attacks which unfortunately continue to plague him throughout the show. That concludes today's video. Comment below if we missed any similarities between these two Manhattan tycoons. Thanks for watching, and for more awesome videos, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.